ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, good evening, good morning. I hope that all of you are doing well in this tough time with the COVID-19. I'm Dominic Bladner, the IDTF High Performance Manager, and I am very happy and proud to warmly welcome all of you to our 30th ITTF High Performance Development Webinar with the topic Mental Toughness. I want uh, to talk shortly about our webinar code of the Q&A part. Please leave all your questions in the Q&A section. Our guests will try to answer as many as possible in the question and answer part of the webinar. So thank you very much to all the attendees. And now over to the introduction of our guest for today. I would like to warmly welcome Dora Kurimai from Hungary. She's an MA in psychology and thought psychology, a certified mental performance consultant in the Association for Applied Thought Psychology and adjunct faculty at the Sport Psychology Program at John F. Kennedy University in California. Furthermore, she is an author of the uh, following books, My Stories of Mental Toughness on and off the table, Get Your Game Face on Like the Pros, and Get Your Game Face on Workbook. She was a Hungarian national team member and European champion in Cadet Girls Team Event. And last but not least, she is a coach at the Ping Pot in New York. So, Thank you very much for taking the time uh, to be our webinar guest of today, Dora. It's nice to meet you. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the introduction, the nice introduction. And uh, thank you so much for the opportunity to give this presentation. And uh, yes, I'm Dora Kermay, and I'm based in New York City. And uh, it's a tough time for uh, everyone during the pandemic, and I'm very excited to give this presentation about mental toughness. And what I'm going to share, basically, it's going to be uh, based on performance enhancement research and also my personal experience as an elite athlete. So thank you. <laughs> thank you for the opportunity. So let's get started. And um, thank you very I'm much, Laura. And um, yeah, we, we touched the topic uh, Thought psychology in our 12th IDTF HPD webinar with the topic mental preparation in table tennis. In that time, Dr. Christian Zepp from Germany and Guillaume Martinet from France, who is a PhD, shared their knowledge regarding the preparation uh, for table tennis. And now this time we are very much uh, looking forward uh, to talk about mental toughness, to dig deeper into this topic. And uh, before uh, going over to the presentation of Dora Kurima, I would like to also warmly welcome our experienced and well-known IDTF high-performance elite coach, Massimo Costantini. So pass over to you, Max. Thank you, thank you, Dominique. And uh, of course, thank you, Dora, for taking the time to, uh, to share with us your, uh, your knowledge and your experience. Yes, man, uh, tough times with uh, mental toughness and then Today we have uh, another great opportunity to meet the knowledge uh, the, about table tennis. So I really, really, I'm really, really happy to have Dora here, and uh, I'm eager to 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 hear what uh, she has to present. And uh, I would uh, stop here, and I give the floor immediately to Dora to for your presentation. So have a good one. Thank you. Thank you very much, Max. So let's get started. Um, and I'm going to share my screen. I think you 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 can um, share see my screen, right? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so I'm getting started. <laughs> So today I'm going to talk about mental toughness, and um, I would like to give a short overview of what I'm going to uh, talk about. I'm going to give a short introduction about mental toughness, and I also will uh, share six important skills to develop mental toughness. Then I will also um, share with you four techniques that you can immediately uh, apply in your game 
and daily routine. And at the end, I also give you, I will give you some uh, recommended reading and videos. So let's get started. First of all, I would like to start with the performance uh, wheel because table tennis um, includes many different components such as uh, physical side conditioning, the tactical part, understanding the game, uh, the technical skills and the mental emotional skills as well. And these components are all very important and they are affecting your mental toughness. And um, unfortunately, many times the mental preparation is missing from athletes preparation. And uh, it's, it's very important. And all these components uh, have to be trained to uh, able to do well under pressure. But what is mental toughness? Mental toughness is a psychological, mental toughness is a psychological edge that helps you to cope better during competition, training, and life to be more consistent, focused, confident, and ultimately better than your opponents under pressure. And mental toughness also allows you to bounce back quickly after challenges and setbacks. Um, I also would like to share what mental toughness experts are saying um, about mental toughness and what components are important. So coping skills and stress management skills are very important and uh, you have to have good coping strategies um, when you're experiencing stress. The second very important factor as well is emotional reactivity. So emotional stability is very important. For example, when an unexpected event happens, you have to be able to emotionally stable otherwise you lose focus and um, it's also draining your your energy so you can't perform well psychological skills such as self-confidence focus stamina and resilience are also crucial resilience means that you can bounce back quickly after uh, setbacks and um, ability to perform under pressure um, is, um, is very important as well. So all of these components are crucial to able to build uh, and develop mental toughness. So I, I, would like to, I, I also would like to talk about mindset. Mindset is basically means that set of attitudes that how you, you uh, see the world. And uh, fixed mindset means that talents and abilities cannot be developed. For example, when there is a player and you see that, oh, this player is slow or this player has no hand-eye coordination. So you're thinking about the player as um, uh, regarding their abilities that they are fixed and you can't improve um, them. And on the other hand, gross mindset means that talents and abilities can be developed. It means that you can work on skills and uh, basically help the athlete to develop all the necessary skills. And basically, it's very important that you are developing skills in the long term because that leads to success. So it's important to develop gross mindset, know your strengths, know your weaknesses, and um, basically build on your strengths, but also develop your um, the skills that you have to work on. Many times we think that all the champions just have it all, but we don't we don't see how much uh, preparations and skills building um, happening in a long period of time. And I many times I say you either win or you win experience. And you learn the most from challenging situations and setbacks. And basically winning is the result of preparations and skills building in a long period of time. So the bottom line is that mental toughness can be learned and developed. And I'm going to share six important skills how to develop mental toughness. 
first of, first of all, motivation is one of the most important skills. And um, motivation is crucial because it, keep, it keeps going in a long uh, term and helps you to keep um, bounce back after challenging situations and setbacks. And it also helps to adopt and learn new skills. And you see in this picture that many times you have a plan and uh, you think that it's really easy to get there or it's just a straight line. But the universe plans for you, it's usually very different. And you have to overcome challenges and you have to adopt and you have to uh, learn new skills. And when you're going through challenges, it's also very important to know your purpose, why you are doing what you are doing, why you're an athlete or a coach. Are you doing it, the activity for itself, or are you doing it for uh, external resources such as money, fame, social status? And um, knowing your purpose is very important regarding your motivation and also remembering when you're going through difficult times uh, that while you are doing it, it's very, very helpful. The next important skill uh, you could also see in um, the definition and um, also in the research is that, of course, coping pressure is very, very important. And when there is a stressful event, uh, it's what is crucial is how you interpret the stressful uh, event. If if you if you have positive feelings and you can control your body um, regarding your, for example, in a tournament you are able to be loose, and uh, also you have positive thoughts and uh, you are focusing on positive feelings you're going to experience facilitative anxiety, so the event is going to be a challenge for you. And basically, you can perform well. But if you're interpreting the situation as, um, as a threat and um, you basically uh, freeze <laughs> during your match and you start panicking and worrying, it's going to be um, choking and you will experience debilitated debilitative anxiety. So what's really important is that how, how you interpret the situation and positive emotions and, um, and uh, able to focus on what you can control are very, very helpful. And basically, it can be trained. The third uh, skill that I, I listed here is uh, self-confidence, believe in yourself. Actually, this is the number one attribute that elite athletes cited for mental toughness, um, elite athletes cited for, for basically mental toughness skills. And self-belief is very, very important. You have to believe in your skills that you are able to perform under pressure. And I mean, there is also a different range in self-confidence uh, because if you're overconfident, it's not so good in the long term because you're not going to put that much effort and preparation in future events. And, and low self-confidence is also not good, but I would say um, um, overconfidence is way, way much better than no confidence. So confidence is really important. And you need to think and act, and act like a champion, and it's a skill, and it also can be trained. So this is a very, very uh, important skill to believe in yourself. The fourth uh, skill that is um, crucial to having an optimal energy level. <clears throat> Everyone has an optimal energy level. And um, if it's too high or if it's too low, your performance is not going to be that good. So if you're too nervous, it's really difficult to perform well. Or you're too low in energy, a little bit sleepy also, you're not going to do your best. So it's very important to know where is your optimal energy level. You call it also aerosol. Um, or anxiety, but 
I, I like the energy the best because it has a positive connotation. And um, the good thing is that you can basically self-aware and know what, where, where is your optimal energy level by observing yourself. And when you're, for example, in a tournament and if you're too nervous, you have to do things that helps you to a little bit more relax, so have moderate energy level. And there are different techniques for that, and I will explain it later. Actually, uh, breathing one of the exercise that you can use to uh, release the stress. And if you're too relaxed, what can you do? Also, there are different techniques such as listening to music and you know doing more warm up. It's really helpful, and it 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 helps you to um, basically um, adjust your energy level. So energy level is uh, crucial and also it's individual, so everyone is different. So you have to know what is your optimal energy level, because if you have optimal energy level, actually your focus is working well and you can be in the zone and also the other name for it for flow. So I just move to the next slide, is, um, which is focus. Focus is an other important skill because uh, if you are in the present moment, uh, you are going to also uh, perform well. And um, it's, a, it's, it's focus is a learned skill and it can be trained. And it means that you're paying attention to the relevant stimulus or relevant cues and ignoring the irrelevant one. So it's basically being in the here and now and um, be, being in the present moment. You're not in the past or not in your future. And your home is in at your home is at the present moment. But to be able to improve and be also more self-aware about your focus and concentration, you have to first know your distractions. So what are the the situations when you lose focus? Um, you can list actually that what are the situation are the spectators um, if they are the spectators they they are basically out of your control if you're focusing on the spectators you can control them but you can control for example focusing on the ball focusing on the tactics and even just um, focusing on your breathing helps you um, to be at the present moment um, also, another example for distractions, you can be distracted by your opponent style. You can control your opponent style, but you can learn to handle the situation and you can focus more on the tactics and also you can train yourself how to play against that style. So know your distractions, also know how you can handle your distractions, and then what helps you to improve your focus, know what you have to focus on. For example, when you are playing, you have to focus on the ball, um, being um, able to know your tactics and um, relaxing your muscles and believing in yourself. And um, basically, you have to focus on what you can control. It's also a good way to do that. You just write down um, the important thing you want to focus on on the match because if you do that you don't have time to think about other things. And lastly, um, recovery is extremely important. You have to celebrate success and recover quickly from setbacks and learn from them. So why does it important? Um, how does normal stress reaction look like? Uh, there are different stages. And um, to explain that, let's go back to the prehistoric time and uh, let's imagine that the tiger is coming and the caveman is just uh, noticing that the tiger is coming. That's the fight or flight stage. That's the first stage. And uh, in this scenario, probably the caveman is going to start running. So that's going to be the adaption part. And 
after that's the second stage of the normal stress reaction. And the third stage is going to be after the blood escape, this key person has to recover. Otherwise, the next day, um, he can perform well and might die in, if, if another tiger is coming, right? So recovery is very important. And the same thing's happening when you're in a tournament. You are um, basically, um, it's very important how you interpret the situation, you are how you are going to cope with the tournament, and um, and you have to adjust and adapt to the tournament situations. And uh, after the tournament, you also have to recover because if you're not recovering, you can't perform as that well in the long term. So a quick recovery is very important. So these were the six important skills that I mentioned. And now I'm going to continue with four important techniques to develop um, mental toughness. You can apply these techniques immediately, and um, they are great ones. The first one is actually goal setting. Goal setting is really is a great tool because it helps you to uh, actually improve your motivation because you know your goals. It also helps to uh, go in the direction that you want to go. And um, it also is, is helping to improve your focus because you're focusing on, on the right things. So it's a great tool. And there are different kind of goals. I mean, we are in the competitive world and of course results are very important. And, you know, um, athletes has to win tournaments and matches to be able to get sponsorships, to be able to get in the national team. And basically, it's really focusing on the outcome. This is one of the uh, one type of um, goal is basically the outcome outcome goals because it's focusing on the result of the contact a contest, and it's it's about beating someone or winning a tournament. And this is of course very important. But if you're focusing only on the outcome. Many times I also see athletes, they, they forget about what they have to do to get there. And they are not focusing on the process and they are not focusing on what are the action step, steps that I have to beat this person. So to able to do that, um, there are also process goals. Process goals are focusing on a technique skills to learn a new skill. For example, a young athlete can learn to execute a spinny forehand loop from underspin. So basically, you, you have the athletes to set up goals, to focusing on learning new skills rather than just um, focusing on, oh, did you beat this person or what's, how, how did you do at the tournament? So for, uh, setting up process goals are very important. Also, there are performance goals. Performance goals means that you're focusing on improvements uh, relative to, one, uh, to one's uh, past performance. So, for example, improving your forehand loop percentage. And setting up goals like that, it's um, very, very important. And if you are uh, setting up goals, of course, you, you can set up all these three goals but um, how I said, setting up process goals and performance goals are very crucial because they are helping to direct your attention on the process and also it helps to think about the long term, how you can reach your outcome goal. Another important um, factor regarding goal setting to use smart um, goal setting. SMART is an acronym. So when you are setting up goals, it has to be specific. Specific um, means that you, you, your goal is not too broad or vague, oh, I just want to be better, because um, it, it's, it, it's, you're not defining um, well enough. So it's very important as well, when you're setting up a goal, you have to be specific about it. For example, I want to, for a young athlete, you can say, we can work on improving your forehand percentage 
in the next two months. So that's a specific um, goal. And the second um, letter stands for M, which is measurable, which stands for measurable. You also have to be able to measure the process and the progress. And you can do that by also getting regular feedback and also see where you are at and basically be better every day um, regarding your goal. The third um, letter stands for A, which is adjustable. Adjustable, um, ad adjusting your goals are very important. For example, during the pandemic, you, you can't uh, 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 train and there are many different factors. So you also have to adjust your goals. There are no tournaments and also your mental, physical health are very important. So adjusting your goals are also very important. R stands for realistic. When you're setting up goals, it also has to be realistic. If it's, um, if it's not achievable, you will lose motivation. For example, a young athlete is just starting um, playing and immediately want to um, make the national team or even make the Olympics. That might be a little bit unrealistic um, to do it immediately, right? So it's, it's good to set up challenging but achievable goals. And lastly, T stands for time-based, which means that you want to give a specific time when you want to achieve your goal, because if you don't do that, it's not going to be the, that effective. So this is the SMART uh, goal setting guide that you can use, and it's very, very helpful when you are setting up goals. And how I said, there are long-term goals, and it's very important as well to break it down to baby steps, not just focusing on, on a long-term goal, but break it down to weekly and uh, daily goals. And um, I just, I'm just showing this slide because it helps you to define your goal, give a, um, a date when you would like to achieve it, and also list all the necessary steps that um, you have to do to able to reach your goal. So goal setting is great because um, it's also by um, achieving your goals, it's also helping to increase your self-confidence, which is very, very important. The next technique that I'm going to talk about, visualization. Visualization is a mental rehearsal. So basically, you are imagining yourself uh, uh, playing, and it's a great tool, and um, it's also a, a pre-performance routine, um, which is pre-performance routines are basically physical rituals and thought patterns that you do consistently right before or a day before your match or important event. So you can do visualization a day before or just right before your match, and you can visualize yourself, imagine yourself, how you are playing. And it's a great thing to do because it helps you to manage your stress level, increase your confidence, increase your concentration, and increase your overall, your performance. And I really like this too, actually, because I uh, that was the first uh, sports psychology technique that I uh, or mental toughness technique that I learned. I worked with a sports psychologist when I was age 14. And um, basically, I learned these techniques, uh, technique and I applied it immediately. And it, it helped me to make uh, the Hungarian national uh, team uh, the first time. But how does visualization exactly um, look like or how can you do that? So visualization produces a virtual reality movie in your mind by using all of your senses and you can imagine yourself, for example, playing your best match. So a night before or even right before, you can just visualize yourself, recall an experience when you played your best match. You see yourself um, uh, playing and uh, Basically, you can see the spectators, you hear how the ball is bouncing, you hear how, um, how uh, even what, 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 what's the noise inside of the hall, 
also you feel how you hold the racket you feel your muscles you feel your feelings you're feeling the tension or you're feeling how you are um basically what you are um focusing on and um the more vivid the experience the better it is and um, this is a great tool because if you do that it helps you to recall the memory and the optimal state when you perform your best and even while you're visualizing um, the same brain activity is happening in your um, brain and also you have micro muscle activities and it's the same when actually playing so it's 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 a mental practice and how I said, the more vivid the experience, so the more senses um, you, you feel, the better it is. And also, you are the director of your movie, so um, it's important to be able to control that what you want to imagine, that's what you are imagining. So how I said, playing your best match, it's, it's a great um uh, visualization to recall, but also what you can do, also you can uh, specifically visualize specific tactics against your opponent. So if you know who you are playing against, you can just visualize the tactic the night before, even right before your opponent, and uh, it helps with the execution. So when you step at to the table, you don't have to think about it. You're very sharp, you know what to do, and um, you just do your best. And uh, the third important um, scenario, what you can imagine basically uh, performing under pressure is also um, a great thing to uh, practice mentally. So you can even visualize yourself uh, what you're going to do at 1010, how you're going to feel, how you're going to handle the situation, what you're going to focus, or uh, what what um, what stroke you are going to use, and how you can stay relaxed and sharp and confident, and how you are uh, using positive affirmations. So this is a great technique. I highly recommend. Um, for you, especially now during the pandemic, you can even just uh, visualize how you practice. It's also very, very helpful. And the third technique I'm going to uh, talk about that you can use immediately is self-talk. Your mind and body are interconnected. And self-talk is an internal dialogue with yourself. It can be out loud or inside um, in your head. And um, it's basically affecting your performance and self-esteem. And uh, there are 60 to 80,000 thoughts per day and 2,500 to uh, 3,300 thoughts in an hour. If you think about that, that's a very big number, right? And it's impacting your whole life and performance. So it's very important. So if they are positive, they're increasing your self verse and performance. And if they are negative, it's decreasing your self verse and performance. So, but what can you do to have more positive thoughts? One of the techniques that you can do is use affirmations. Um, every thought you think, every word you say is an affirmation. And creating positive affirmations, um, it's, it's, it's a great technique to do again. Positive affirmations are short state, statements which express a personal positive message or something happening in the present. And they must be positive in the present tense, focus on positive things you can do instead of negative negative don'ts. Um, I hear from many athletes, oh, I just don't want to choke. Um, I just don't want to be angry. Um, I, um, uh, um, I just don't want to screw up, right? These are, not, these are not positive affirmations. You always want to focus on what you want, because also if you say, I don't want to see the pink elephant, what I'm going to see, the pink elephant. So here are some examples what you can do. 
uh, to create some affirmation. So it's a short statement how I said, and um, you can just say, I'm strong, I feel the ball, I just go for my shots, I'm calm, I can do it. And um, it's, it's a short statement, but it's very, very helpful when you're in a high pressure situations um, that you, you say something nice to yourself. And um, it's, um, it's good to create these affirmations. You can just grab a piece of paper and start writing down short statements, short positive affirmations that can be helpful for you. And you can practice that. Uh, I'm show, showing uh, this picture to you because the word is literally what we make it and what do you see? You can see this picture and you can see two faces or a vase. It's up to you, right? And uh, basically the same happening when, when there is a situation, uh, two people can uh, interpret the situation very differently and it, it's based on uh, previous experiences. But the good thing is that you can self-aware of, 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 of this and you can reframe the situations. And how you see things, it's affecting your um, self-talk. So I'm also going to talk about now how you can change your negative thoughts to positive ones. Because how I said, self-awareness is key. So if you are recognizing, the first step is knowing what's happening. What are your thoughts? For example, you can you can um, you can think that I'm 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 feeling tense and anxious about playing right before my match, and um, that's that's not too positive. So you can reframe the situation that I'm excited and ready. I will do my best. I will fight. You see the difference. It's uh, word matters because the words create your word. And uh, you can you can change your words. That's a good thing. Another example: I'm afraid of these high pressure situations. Also, it's it's not too good if you say that, but you can rather reframe the situation and just um, say to yourself, "I'm just focusing on what I can control and on my routines." And lastly, I'm so scared and nervous. You can say rather say to yourself and re, uh, reframe the situation. I believe in myself. I can do it. And um, and this is also practice. And the first step, how I said, knowing your negative uh, self talk, also writing it down. You can even create a journal log every day that what is happening in your uh, mind. And after you can you can uh, reframe um, these sentences and uh, practice it basically. And the last technique that I would like to talk about is is breathing. Breathing is crucial and and very very important. And I'm many um, I'm pretty sure many of you experience that when you are nervous, you have a shallow breathing. It's hard to breathe. And um, and we we don't realize that how important is is breathing and it's a vital component. And one of the the technique that I'm explaining here it's called deep breathing. Uh, deep breathing basically means that you are breathing in um, under your belly. So when when you have shallow breathing, it's more at your chest. And when you have deep breathing, it's more goes under your belly. And it's, it's, it's really important because if you have deep breathing, it, it increases the blood ox oxygen level and also releases your tension, muscle tension, which is very important in table tennis, right? And uh, when you're deep breathing, the best is if you inhale through your nose, under your belly, and exhale through your mouth. And uh, to demonstrate that, you can just check how your breathing is. You can put your right palm on your chest, the left, left palm um, at your stomach. And when you uh, breathe in, you can see in this picture, you want your belly go out. So your left palm should go up. So you breathe in through your nose, under your belly, and your left palm should go up. You hold it. <sighs> 
and after you exhale through your through your mouth. And it's also very important to relax your shoulders and um, and um, try to be uh, in a relaxed mode. And I, I, I listed here a four, seven, eight uh, ratio. Uh, it's a good ratio. So you breathe in uh, counting by four through your nose, under your belly, you hold it for seven seconds. And after you exhale through your mouth by counting by eight. <sighs> And um, this is this is a very um, great technique to do even right before your match or when you're feeling anxious, even at home. And uh, you can basically repeat it uh, three or four times and uh, you will feel much more relaxed. So basically you breathe in through your nose. You hold it. And exhale through your mouth. <sighs> And another important thing to mention here, when you're breathing in, it's good to imagine that you are breathing in energy, self-confidence, and when you're exhaling, you're releasing the tension, anxiety, and worry. Uh, so uh, you can uh, repeat this. And also the exhalation has to be longer because that's why also you can see the ratio here, because the exhalation is, is releasing the tension. So um, this is a great tool, but um, as a last exercise and the last slide, I also would like to do, um, do a quick breathe. Uh, you can see the uh, fish and uh, please, um, so you breathe in. Inhale, and you breathe out, exhale. You can uh, imagine you breathe in energy, and you exhale the anxiety and tension. You breathe in, and you exhale. You breathe in through your nose, and you exhale through your mouth. You breathe in through your nose, and exhale through your mouth. All right. Um, and um, Yes, so basically that was the um, um, breathing uh, exercise. And um, this was my presentation. Thank you so much for your attention. I hope you got some great tips that you can uh, apply immediately. And I also want to give you some recommendation for reading and videos. Uh, here are my um, one of my book, my stories of mental toughness on and off the table, where basically I'm sharing my life stories. I um, tie it back to theories and I also give you a couple of tips what you can do. I also created uh, video episodes, 11 video episodes with the book. So basically uh, the video episodes are the same than the book. And uh, lastly, I also created, I just published the Get Your Game Face On workbook which includes many exercises that you can do to improve your mental toughness. And um, please visit my website, which is www.doracremate.com. And um, there are many other resources. And also you can see my other books and uh, other materials that can be helpful for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dora, for the great presentation. And uh, I, I, I hope, I'm, I'm sure, actually, our attendees have found so many uh, familiar situations uh, because during this long uh, time of uh, webinars uh, and also our uh, lessons du during this summer, we have, uh, we have touched so many, so many aspects of this uh, 
of this uh, of this matter you know the mental toughness and the all related uh, all related things but dora dora has been the international uh, table tennis players and also mental uh, uh, mental trainer so i i wouldn't i wouldn't go to play against her because she knows too much actually you know so it's <laughs> it's better to either you walk over or uh, i don't know it's, it's She's too strong just in the beginning, just to start, she's too strong. So, Laura, we, yesterday when we were preparing the questions, we had so many questions to, you know, to, uh, to, to, to pose to you, and, um, but we have selected some, and I would, uh, would like to start with, uh, with the first one uh, with you. And uh, asking you, uh, what is the, the crucial feeling uh, that creates the threat in one's performance. You know, when you're there, you play, you're a player, I'm a player, we all are players, you know, maybe an easy ball you miss, uh, you know, or maybe an opponent's super skilled shot uh, or something, someone, uh, you know, from outside. So what is the, the, crucial, the crucial moment that uh, can be a threat for a player? Oh, well, definitely missing an easy shot, um, also basically missing many points in a row. So that's definitely something that is creating a threat in the performance. And in, in that moment, it's it, it, it what can be re really useful to create um, a mistake ritual, which means that you, you do uh, physically and um, mentally something right after your your mistake because it really helps you to release the tension and move on the next point. I would say what's really important, just play point by point regardless from the previous point. If you can do that, you're not going to feel a threat. So, um, but of course, it, it, it's happening many times and and when it's happening, you can also imagine a positive image or you can, you know, move more and take a little time. So shake, shake your anxiety off, I would say. Um, that's very important. But even just, just um, I would say, um, the, the thought, which is, is also uh, creating a threat that I'm not good enough or I'm going to lose, right? And just even thinking about the outcome actually is also creating a threat. So being in the present moment is is the key for for a good performance. Because you're not thinking of the past, your mistake, or you're not thinking of the winning or losing in the future. You are in just in the present moment. So and then I think uh, these are also connected with what you said before. You know, to the interpretation of the things uh, happen and also the the statement the affirmation statement that can uh, you know can uh, be used to overcome some situation and breathing breathing that one i was breathing before i was relaxed i have to say yeah that fish over there <laughs> helped me a lot <laughs> uh, yes yeah, actually breathing is great <laughs> yeah dominic i think you you have uh, also one for uh, for dora Please, back to you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Massimo. And before asking Dora my question, I kindly remind and invite our attendees to ask our guest Dora any questions regarding our topic of today in our Q&A section. So don't be shy to take this unique opportunity. And now over to you, Dora. <laughs> my question is made up of two parts, Dora. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would uh, like to know how much emphasizes we, we should put on mental toughness in the early ages. I would say it's very important and uh, starting age 10, it's, it's great. Actually, I'm working with a couple of athletes because if you start working with them, it, it just become a skill uh, for them like a stroke, right? It's also a mental skill. So it's the same way how you are learning a stroke. And um, I would say the earth started early age. It's it's great, and um, it's it's it 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 could be uh, very very beneficial. And and also kids are learning way so much faster 
uh, the younger the kids that they are learning uh, faster as well and just pick it up quickly. Yeah, I totally agree with you. They are like a sponge. And um, Dora, the, the second part of the question now. Dora, from your point of view, is it an advantage to start as early as possible with the visualization technique? Uh, or does the athlete have to have already a, at least a basic knowledge about the sports psychology techniques you mentioned before? Yeah, you don't need a basic knowledge. And actually, many athletes are using it naturally. So they don't even know that they are already visualizing, oh, it's a, it's a technique. So all these actually mental toughness techniques, many times the athlete is doing it intuitively without learning about it. So if it's the same with visualization. Um, I talk with many athletes, and they are already doing that without learning it intuitively. So I, I wouldn't say um, you need too much um, knowledge before you visualizing. And um, many young athletes even might do it without knowing it. You can just be more con conscious about it and uh, self-aware and, and also educate uh, the kids that what's important to include in your visualization and it has to be positive, right? So they have to visualize the good things that not the um, um, the bad the bad ones or the bad scenarios. And also, I didn't say in visualization, but even just visualizing that how you can overcome challenging situations is very powerful. When thank you very much, Dora. And when you when you mentioned uh, you know intuitively, another question, short question came to my mind. Uh, because you can com combine the breathing techniques like uh, with visualization, so to increase the level of the outcome, would you would you suggest uh, to combine the techniques? And if yes, with which level of knowledge should you start to implement uh, the combination of it? So sorry, could could you uh, repeat your question? That. Um, I, I was asking, uh, you know, to combine breathing techniques with visualization to have a better outcome, you know, mm -hmm. of both. Mm -hmm. so, uh, would you suggest to do it? And if yes, uh, when would you suggest to do it? If you, after having already a basic knowledge or... Yes, I mean... Um which age that's the question or or when 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 in the during the event for example no, I mean uh, during, age, yeah. which age yes I mean you know teaching breathing um, exercises I mean it can be very in in a very early age and just being more um, you know teaching the kids that more to to be more self aware how they feel how they breathe and um teaching them it's great and it can be as early like age i would say my my personal opinion, opinion that if you are um teaching uh kids breathing visualization age age 10 is a great um age to start but i mean there there is plus and minus so it also depends on 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 the kid as well, yeah, and, and also and while you are doing it. Yes, okay, and you, you can oh, definitely. Okay. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry, I didn't answer your question. You can definitely combine it. You are focusing on your breathing, and while you are focusing on your breathing, you can imagine and visualize things, and that's that's very powerful. I also didn't say when you're visualizing the best ways to do that when you're in comfortable position and close your eyes, I mean, uh, and focus on your breathing while you're doing your visualization. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dora. And I would like to pass over to you, Max, for the next question. Yeah, well, it's, it's clear that we can appreciate, you know, when you combine the knowledge, the passion and the experience from Dora, we can feel uh, you know the, the the quality of the content so once again thank you very much dora it's that is the key uh, of for the success i always said like that so i have another question uh, for you um as a coaches uh, we we rec we do recognize uh, you know when uh, when when the player gets out from the uh, you know the eyes of uh, uh, 
how do, do the players can recognize by themselves? You know, maybe they start shaking, maybe they start moving around, they get stiff, uh, sweating maybe the hands. Uh, what, can, what, uh, what can be the, the, the signs, you know, where we can advise them, you know, uh, maybe mm -hmm. to be calm or, uh, or whatever, you know. So um, how they can recognize on their own if we are not there to coaching them? <laughs> Yes, yeah, so um, that's a very good question. So when their anxiety happens, actually there are two different kind of components. There is the cognitive component, the worry and the thoughts, right? And there is the physical component that you just mentioned. And there are many physical symptoms when someone is anxious, such as uh, rapid heartbeat, uh, shaking, uh, feeling tense, butterflies in the stomach, shallow breathing, dry mouth, and uh, we can educate the players that whenever you are feeling these, that means that you're nervous. But again, nervousness is, is not a bad thing. It's part of the game. And, and when there is an important event, it's normal. It's, it's, it's all about how you can shake it off and, and, and uh, um, how you can um, um, do well. Many athletes, they feel terrible right before but after you start playing, it just goes away, right? But right before, it's it's not feeling good. And um, and um, but how I said, it's breathing. It's it's a great tool. Listening to music. I I also suggest that I didn't uh, included that, but that was a big one. It can be combined also breathing and visualization as well. Even listening to music. So that's a third component. And everyone is different, so you basically have to know what works for your player because even I know some athletes that don't like to listen to music, uh, but others really like it. Um, others uh, like to do more stretching. The other one, very many, people, yeah. so many different yeah. things. Uh, it's very subjective, you mean, you know, so of yeah, course. Yes, so you, the best is to provide many tools and after see what works for your player. Yeah. Yeah, which one might work better? Yeah, yeah, very good, very good. So, Dominique, again, to you. Thank you very much, Massimo. And uh, the next question to you, Dora. Uh, what are your thoughts related to releasing the negative energy you've mentioned with the negative self-talk? I honestly I don't really believe in that, but of course you can you can do it like if you just do it. I mean, some players sometimes curse, right? Um, it's it's it let it out. It's it's a one-time thing. It's um it's okay, but if you're doing it continuously and a long time, it's not helpful. So I don't believe that you you are you know. I mean, it depends. I mean, if you're talking something bad about outside of you, that's different, right? So you can be negative with your environment or your opponent, but not with you. You put your anger to other things. Uh, but if you're negative with yourself, that's not helpful. Hey, thank you for this clear opinion. And uh, the time is flying, Massimo. And uh, yeah, we are moving over to the Q&A part of the webinar. So I kindly to ask you, ask you to start with the short question. Yeah, we also yeah we have received uh, now I can I can see some uh, questions from our attendees, uh, uh, Carlos, Philip. Hey, Philip, uh, uh, great to see you. Your team and so on. But before going, I have one prior webinar questions from uh, Dave uh, Renderson, Table Tennis England. Uh, the, the question is the following. There appears uh, uh, to be more and more shouting and uh, showing uh, among juniors games try to put their opponents off. How does a junior remain focused? If, if if the opponent is saying cha, right? Yeah, shouting, Ale, cho, come on, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. shouting like that, you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Actually, it's 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 a, yes, it's it, 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 yeah. it becomes very small, or maybe yes, it, 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 yeah, it's a very tough cho back. But um, uh, what you can do is basically focus on your your um your routine between points, or rather wiping the table. 
and after just um, uh, focusing on also on the breathing and moving around and affirmations are very, very helpful. Actually, uh, in general, when somebody is showing, you can just refocus um, yourself to what you can control. You, can, you cannot control your opponent, right? That's definitely a distraction. But you can um, focus on making the next point and uh, focus on uh, able to keep your focus on the right things and not on showing. So what you can also train for that with loud music and distractions, even at training, uh, to able to handle these difficult situations. So identify, so I would say, identify the, the, the important things to focus on in this, this, this scenario. So um, on the ball, on the strategy, on the, on, you know, on, um, on your serve, um, it's good to make a list and practice it. And even if that's happening a lot during the training, somebody can pretend that showing a lot and uh, kind of training the showing how to handle that. So it's not a matter how to uh, to get focused during the match when it happens, but also to to get ready to to get prepared uh, maybe before doing some exercise as you said uh, uh, to 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 get ready for that. If actually better when you know that that opponent you know is very is very well known in shouting <laughs> quite a lot. So maybe better to get ready before getting getting there. So. Yes, and also you can also, if you know that you're playing against this person, you can also visual, visualize it, right? How you're right. not going to get distracted. All right, good. Thank you. Thank you. I hope uh, Dave, uh, uh, Dora, um, Dora replied uh, to you. And then uh, Dominique, uh, back to you. Thank you very much, Massimo. And uh, Dora, the next question is from Carlos Esnat. Hola, Carlos, from my side. And uh, Carlos would like to know, do you consider that the help of a sport psychologist is essential for today's high-level players? Yes, I think it's, it's, it's essential, but you can also definitely, uh, because I mean, at the highest level, what really matters is that who can do their best. Um, and the skills are very similar, right? So how they can handle high pressure situations and it's, it's very important. And I would also say everybody is different. Some, um, players naturally using ISTAD intuitively, many tactics, um, tactics and techniques. Uh, regarding that, that um, I, I, I definitely would say uh, um, sports psychology also helps with uh, self-awareness and mental toughness as well, self-awareness. So know your strengths, know your mental strengths and know, know um, the areas you want to improve mentally. So definitely it's uh, very important to, to have an analysis, uh, analysis that what you can still do to be even better mentally. So in your opinion, uh, most of a high percentage or most of the high professional sportmen, they, they do work with uh, sport psychology, oh, right? Oh, although, oh, no. although there are many times, let's say, working behind the scenes, you know? Yes. Um, I think I would say that also um, it doesn't mean that someone has to work someone all the time, right? It can be one or, you know, a couple of times. So it, it also depends on the athlete. Um, and, um, and also some of the, for example, Chinese players, right? They already, it's already included their coaching. So you can also have many different resources, how you get your your mental coaching, basically. Thank you, Dora. Some coaches, and some coaches are already applying, um, you know, a couple of those as well. So coaches are also great. I mean, um, talking um, many coaches uh, involves for psychology and mental toughness as well. Thank you, Dora. And uh, Carlos, hopefully, Dora, answered your question as you wanted it to be answered. And now back to you, Massimo, for the next one. 
Yeah, I want to uh, take this uh, from our friend, uh, long-time friend, uh, Philippe Molozov uh, from France. Um, he says, uh, uh, what progress in visualization do you uh, preconize or recognize? I don't know, maybe it's, uh, it's a typo here. Because many players have problems to see themselves in two situations. Yeah, so I, I suggest um, that's also, uh, that's a control part, right? So I, I, when I talk about visualization, it's very important to have a vivid experience that the more senses you, you feel, but also the control part, so what you want to imagine, that you imagine. So it's really good actually start with to write down even just you know a couple of things that what you want to imagine and what would be important for you and uh, if there is a hard time with that it can be helpful full to recall some previous experiences when you already experienced it so recalling previous memories when it's happened can be very helpful um, and and also if uh, visualization is also good when an event happened and it didn't go the way you wanted. You can recreate uh, the event and uh, create a different outcome, and you visualize how you overcame um, on 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 that situation. But um, I mean, it's also training. Uh, I would say start small. And um, again, there are different kind of visualizations because there are also guided visualization when someone is guiding you. Actually, that's what I do with with athletes because it's, there's a difference when somebody is, is guiding what you, so basically telling you what to imagine that can, you know, basically helpful to this uh, athlete, or you are creating your own script and you are visualizing it. So there are differences between that. And I would say if, if someone is having a trouble, guided visualization could be, could be um, helpful and uh, to, to work on that. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Dominic, I think we are, uh, uh, I don't know, do we have uh, time for one more? Or uh, uh, anyway, I give back to you, Dominic. So, Thank Maybe you so we can conclude here, or uh... it's time for the very, very last question for you, Dora, and it's a very tricky one. And let's have a check how your memory works. <laughs> uh, Julia would uh, thank you first of all for the for your presentation. She liked it, and um, she would like to know if you could share one of your life stories in which you were able to win a challenging match. And what specific skill or technique helped you in the in that uh, crucial situation? Um, all right. So yes, uh, uh, absolutely. Um, I would say I can talk about. Actually, it's also <laughs> included in the book. It was really long time ago. Um, I um, I had to play the final actually in the European Table Tennis Championship. And, um, and what helped me is to really, I mean, one of the things that helped me, I, I visualized myself the night before. It was really helpful. And also during the match, I was using uh, lots of positive affirmations. And I was really not trying to think about um, winning or losing. I was just focusing on what is my job and what I have to do and play point by point. Um, so um, in, in that way, I was really not focusing on, on what's the score and what other people are going to think or uh, if I'm going to choke or not. I was just focusing on what I want and uh, how I said, breathing, um, positive affirmations, visualization beforehand, and know your tactics because tactics are also so important. You can be mentally tough, but if you're not playing the right tactics, you 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 um, it can definitely diminish your 
your performance. And another thing I also have to say, uh, mental toughness is not, you, you, it doesn't mean that you always win, right? So uh, that's an important factor, but it, it, it means that you're focusing on the right things and, and you move on regardless from the previous uh, point and previous performance. Thank you very much, uh, Dora. And uh, we could talk for hours and hours about uh, this important uh, topic. Um, Dora, uh, also from my side, a big thank you for your comprehensive presentation. And I also want to thank you uh, in the name of the entire ATDF uh, High Performance in Development team for uh, sharing your knowledge, your experience, your thoughts and expertise and for giving us so many interesting insights into the topic mental toughness. So thank you very much, Dora, for this. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. And um, um, yes, I'm looking forward to um, further presentations as well. <laughs> thank you for the kind words, Dora. And uh, I want to thank all of you for your interest and attendance at our 30 ITDF High Performance and Development Table Tennis at Your Fingertips webinar. By the way, the presentation of Dora uh, will be uploaded onto our ittfeducation.com page and can be found uh, in the section knowledge base later on. Um, and I'm very much looking forward uh, to our next webinar with the topic, uh, the world of table tennis rubbers, which will be held on next Thursday, the 3rd December at 3 p.m. Central European time. If you've been interested in details of table tennis rubbers and how, how to choose the right ones, then sign up for our webinar of next week. That's all from my side uh, for today. Stay safe, healthy and fit. And pass over to you, Max, and I kindly ask you for the closing words. Yeah, I, I renovate the, the, the thanks for, uh, for Dora for the time she has uh, given to us and uh, for the presentation, uh, for the answers. I hope all attendees uh, love this, uh, this, uh, this webinar. And uh, yes, we look forward for the next uh, webinar because you know, when we talk about performance, uh, uh, equipment is also important. So oh, <laughs> next <yeah>. week, absolutely. <laughs> we will talk about rubbers. So uh, <laughs> I'm really, really eager to, 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 to be there next week. So once again, Dora, thank you very much. Have a great day ahead. Have a good luck. Uh, play well, play safe, stay safe, and, uh, and uh, hope to see you around. Thank you very much to everyone and see you next time. Ciao. All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye.